Okay, Bismillah. Let's go ahead and let's get started here. Uh, so in yesterday's session, we covered three names, Al-Wahhab, Al-Razak, and Al-Fatah. And Al-Wahhab uh, can be translated as the bestower, the dispenser of all mercies, the giver of gifts. And we describe this gift giving as an endless flow of gift giving, just this waterfall of uh, this giving, uh, this givingness that just comes and uh, doesn't just gives without asking or without having uh, anything, any expectation of something in return. Uh, we talked about that there is kind of an expectation of return of gratefulness, but in the sense that uh, when, when we give a gift as humans, when we give something, we sometimes expect something uh, to be given because it's, it, it'll satisfy something of us. Uh, it'll, it'll fill something of us. But uh, the divine when giving and is not given any thanks in return doesn't take away anything from the divine. The divine is unaffected by that. Uh, it's only the person who's uh, been given the gift that is at a loss. And then we transition to Ar-Razak. Ar-Razak is the one who looks after all beings and provides, the one who nurtures. So this was not just the one who provides food for the human beings or the creation, but uh, the things that are needed for their sustenance, for their nurturing, for their growth. So Arozak really is kind of like that gardener um, that is that is there, helps nurture, but also helps water the plants when they need to be watered. Um, as you know, if you're gardening, uh, not everything just gets watered and doused in water every single day. Some Every plant, everything has a specific schedule in terms of how it needs, and it needs a certain amount of sunlight, and it needs a certain type of soil and it needs certain types of things that go with it. So Ar-Razak really does provide, but not just in the material. Ar-Razak provides in the spiritual, the material, as well as um, just in the holistic. And Al-Fatah, lastly, is the opener, the one who reveals, the one who separates, the one who really uh, opens things, opens the hearts. Uh, and what we can get from this, uh, these three names are that what we are given, what we are given is a means for us to not only see how much we really have been given, how much we are, uh, how much we really do have at our disposal, but also what we are given and what we can do with the things that we've been given, what we can do to affect the world around us with that with which we've been, which we've been given. So these names are a cause for reflection, as with any other names, but particularly these names cause us to reflect um, and cause us to reflect on, uh, on, on just thinking about what all do we really, what all do we really, really have in terms of our gifts? What all is there that has been given to us? So we think about these things, inshallah, we, we uh, go into our next three names for today, which is uh, Al-Alim, Al-Qabid, and al -Basil. So let me go ahead. And before we uh, start these names, we are going to go ahead and do the recitation of the Asma al Husna. So let me go ahead and pull that up real quick in just a moment here. All right. Bismillah. And as always, the uh, names are here for you to, uh, to really start your day to, in the recognition of Allah, to start your day being mindful of Allah, even if you don't know all the names, if, you know, even if you don't know the translation of all the names, uh, just focusing in on even one or the ones we've discussed, just really centering yourself to a place where you can hear these names where you can just feel these names as opposed to seeing like wh which one is which, which, what is the name of it. Just, you know, just feel yourself in that divine presence. So let's begin. <clears throat> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hu Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim al-Malik al-Quddus al-Salam al-Mu'min al-Muhaymin al-Aziz al-Jabbar 
المتكبر الخالق الباري المصور الغفار القهار الوهاب الرزاق الفتح العليم القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير الحكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الهليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الهفيذ المقيت الحسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواصي الحكيم الودود المجيد البعث الشهيد الحق الوقيل القوي المتين الولي الحميد المحسي مبدي المعيد المحي المميت الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقتدر قادم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقم العفو الرغوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني الماني الضار النافع نور هذه البديع الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور بسم الله let's go ahead and begin with the three names for today um, let me go ahead and pull this out here, Bismillah. So, as mentioned, today we'll cover Al Alim, Al Qabid, and Al Basit. And Al Alim concerns uh, the omniscient, the absolute or knower, the absolute knower of wisdom. Al Qabid is the one who contracts, the one who seizes and contracts, the one who holds back. And then Al Basit is the one who relieves, who eases, who unfolds, and who expands. So the, these, these last two are actually often when commentaries uh, explain them, they're often side by side, uh, Al-Qabid and Al-Basit. But uh, we'll, we'll go into Al-Alim right now. Um, and Al-Alim, as I mentioned, is the uh, translated as the omniscient, an absolute knower of wisdom, but it sim symbolizes God's omniscience, this knowing and absolute knowledge since the beginning of time, since before time was created, since, uh, since there was nothing but uh, Allah and uh, Al uh, Al Alim knows those secrets that lie in our hearts and those which are uh, maybe expressed on our tongue, which are kind of on the underside. So if we say something but we mean something else, uh, Al Alim knows the visible, the invisible, the manifest, and the hidden. Uh, and it comes from this root of to know to be taught, to recognize, to perceive, and to experience, uh, as well as teacher, um, as well as sign. So you see so many things about uh, perception, of recognition, of consciousness. And uh, it's interesting to note that uh, the Arabic words of uh, of alam, of world, and alam, sign, and ilm, knowledge, they all come from the same root, uh, same root and their etymological connection, uh, their linguistic connection helps us then understand that the things that we perceive in this world are signs and therefore a source of knowledge. So the alam, the world, is then connected uh, back to Allah through alam, the signs, and then through ilm, that, as well as the knowledge. So it's a very interesting connection that's there, but the insight and knowledge that we have and the insight and knowledge in general as concepts, they have their roots in the divine. And they are not just a means of getting to know things, but getting to know the creator, getting to know who created all this. 
And uh, in the Sufi tradition, uh, knowledge, ilm, and love, ishq, uh, are, are described as wings that give us flight on the path of then transformation of ourselves. So these aren't just things that we hoard up and make uh, just, you know, just, just elevate ourselves above anything, but these are really to utilize as tools to transform us. Um, and this name as a whole, Al-Alim, calls us to act as honestly as we do in the public sphere, as well as we do in the private, because we, we have a, a God that is all-knowing, a God that knows us, the people who leave the house from eight to five and put on one face for the world, and then the people who come back home and put on another face. And Al Alim shows that uh, as it holds us to account in terms of these lives that we live, uh, because oftentimes how society pushes us is that we have a social life, we have a work life, we have a faith life or a religious life, and we, we, we fall into these constructs. So things we do, our, our God ends up just being a God of a prayer mat and in between a book. Our work life is where we put on our best effort and where we put on our best show. And our social or home life may be where we just kind of let other things go or let loose of some other stuff. And so you can see this, uh, this disharmony in so many, uh, you know, so many public figures that, that, you know, things come out in terms of like different scandals or whatever it might be that their, their public life, their private life, different things were happening. And so this really, this name above all else calls us to balance that out and to merge these lives uh, that we are living into that one person. So you're that same person that goes through these, even if you express different aspects of yourself, you're still that same person and you're not a monster on one day uh, or in one, in one uh, sphere and a complete angel in another. And our whole existence, that inner, that outer, the hidden, the manifest are present and are known by Al-Alim. Um, and human knowledge stems from this. Human knowledge comes from Al-Alim. So we know in the Quran that, uh, that Adam salam, was created. And when being created, uh, the angels protested and said, will you create a creation that causes uh, bloodshed and causes so much discord on the earth. And Allah then challenges the angels and says, you know not what I know. And, you know, they, they, they respond in a sense as well. They, they're like, you know, they, they, he was like, do you know better in a sense? Do you, do you guys know anything better? And they were like, no, we, we don't know anything besides what you tell us. Like, you know, so you, you are kind of like the all knowing, you know, all that. So the, the concept of knowledge then, and then you see Adam being able to name all of the things and so many other things like that, but that knowledge being imbued, that, that, that knowledge not being something that just came out of, out of nothing and just, you know, was, was just there, but it was, as with all things, a divine seed that was planted in us and blossoms and can blossom and can be a means of connection. So when we increase in knowledge, when we start to pile up the degrees and put them on our walls, we get to see that these aren't maybe just of our achievement that maybe these are those flowers these are the blossoms of the seed that Allah put in us so as we wrap up with this name here uh only that person that really knows themselves and we, now we're talking about internal knowledge who knows themselves can discard these other veils can discard these veils of arrogance these other things that we have that uh take us away from Allah because as remember in the hadith that we cited a few sessions back, it's already been seven sessions, alhamdulillah, a uh, few sessions back, that the one who knows himself knows their creator. And when we turn that knowledge inward, because we can know any, we can try and, uh, you know, stretch as much as we can, we can collect as many books as we want, we can do all that stuff and pretend that we know as much as we know about the world. But if we don't really know ourselves, how much knowledge have we really attained? So that true knowledge really comes from knowing ourselves, knowing what's around us, because it then reminds us of what uh, our creator is and who our creator is. So as we close out with Al-Alim and what we take away from it, Al-Alim is that awareness and that knowledge uh, of the love of God. And it, it unites the heart and mind in that function, in the function of knowledge and how the, the mind knows things, the heart knows things, but they're not in separate spheres now. They, they, they are now operating as one here. And so uh, just to close out here with, the, with Al-Alim, uh, there's, there's a tradition in, in the Sufi tradition how human beings are seen as the perfect image of the uh, universe in terms of what's created. Whatever exists in the universe exists in us too. And to learn to read into nature, 
to learn to read into the universe, but also to learn and to read into ourselves and to learn about ourselves. To discern the signs and symbols makes us understand that everything around us is a function of a higher a reflection of a higher being just and around and a reflection of Allah's work in us. And everything that lives is sacred and holy. This was very interesting because I had to perform a nikah for a couple yesterday. No, not yesterday. I think it was two days ago. And uh, the, the one thing that, that I had talked about was how life is a journey. Allah puts signs in, in the in the uh, in along this highway of of this life that we're going, and these signs reflect how uh, we can get to our destination, which is Allah. And you know, we, we want to bring someone along that journey who can help us recognize those signs. And by by divine coincidence, by divine uh, intervention here, the, the the first name that I opened up to for the session after was talking about just this: that things in nature, things in us, things all around knowledge, all these things, these aren't anything uh, more than signs and symbols that help us to see the divine and that are a reflection of that divine. So we want to, we want to emphasize to find that divine within you and find that divine within the world around because then you will find the divine above. So Bismillah, let us then transition to Al-Qabid and Al-Basid. Al-Qabid is, as I mentioned, the one that contracts, the one that uh, who assesses the one who seizes and contracts and the one who holds back. Uh, the roots of this word uh, connotate the meaning of seizing, taking, grabbing, clutching, to take hold of something, to contract, to clasp. And the one who uh, is, is al-qabid is the one who stops, who puts pressure, who seizes the heart, who can really conjure difficulties and even lead to isolation and despair a time where tears flow a time of quality a uh, time of quest and time of test and when nothing feels like it has meaning when nothing feels like it's there no one else is there but but you that this time is none else that uh, that is one but Allah is closest to you and so uh, we, we think of this word and we sometimes get maybe get some shudders that oh like you know why, why would Allah lead us to a place like this or bring take us to a place like this but we think of the examples that have been lifted up for us of our pious predecessors Maryam alayhi salam was given the uh, the good glad tidings of a blessed child of Isa alayhi salam and a blessed occasion that that would be of of you know the the uh this this ruh of allah coming to manifest this word of allah coming to manifest in in this person and how, what that meant for her in a sense that she ended up giving birth under uh, a, a date tree you know she she and and isolated from her community but to go through the ordeals of birth to go through alone uh, at that so a single woman back in you know first century palestine you, you you just imagine the dynamics that are there and then coming back to her people who say what is this thing that you've done you've you've certainly done you know this uh, like a shameful thing because they thought that she had just had a child out of wedlock but apart from all these things that were happening you know she was isolated she was taken there but in that moment she had connected with her lord and the, the true purpose had come about in terms of her her relationship to Allah as well as to the Prophet to come. Yunus alayhi salam, famous in a sense that he went, uh, he was he was uh, in that in that belly of the whale, you know, withdrew from his people and was, you know, in, spent that isolation in, in the bottom of the ocean. And what's really interesting is this quote, the Prophet alayhi salam, that I went up to the seven heavens and I found Allah, or I met Allah, or Allah was there. And Yunus alayhi salam, went to the depths of the ocean in the belly of a whale and he found Allah. He met Allah and Allah was there. And so we think of not, not necessarily that Allah is just in one place or Allah can only be in the mosque. Allah can only be here. Allah can, can only be there. Allah is everywhere. And Allah is the one who takes us to these situations who when we say Al-Qabid, the one who contracts, we don't say it uh, just in isolation. We also say Al-Basit because Allah is not just the one that contracts, Allah is the one that expands as well. So uh, it's the flip side is true too. But in this case, uh, in the face of despair, we, we recognize only Allah remains wherever we might be. And in the, in the opposite is true. In the face of grand prosperity, only Allah remains. And so we really, this, this helps us recognize you don't really know what you got till it's gone. And 
you don't really know what you have until you think about what really is there. So it helps us free from those, uh, like free ourselves from that, those attachments that are around us, but recognize that at its core, how we are in our most isolated moments is how we will be when we conclude this life, which is a uh, guarantee for every human being that is born into this earth. So we want to be mindful of this because uh, Al-Qabid is the one that contracts the souls at that time of death and then expands the, the Al-Basit comes in. And when they enter the body, it helps to renew that and, and the, this expansion when you come into the next life. And so as we close out with al-qabid, um, qabd, the word qabd is the time of fasting. So we very relevant to right now is the time of fasting when the impulses begin to fight and to feel restricted. So we all feel this, like, you know, this is just like we, like when, if we are just fasting, we, we, we walk by our fridge or like around 12 o'clock, whatever time you start to get hungry, you really start to see the, the your stomach going into, into gymnastics here and doing going back and forth. And so they feel restricted in their freedom of movement and choice. And to a certain extent, Ramadan is that qabd, that uh, restriction, that constriction of this world. And for then the expansion for the hereafter of all the months, Ramadan is that time that allows us to really constrict. But then in constricting ourselves, we recognize Allah, we're really with Allah. Uh, and then we also inevitably expand as well. And it enables us to see our virtues to turn to our hearts rather than to our external things. So when we're fasting and we're not able to drink or we're not able to eat, the things that we feel like really give us sustenance, we find other things that help us get through the day, help us make those hours count. So Al-Qabd really challenges us to be our better selves by knowing what we really do have when we take away those material sustenances, that material provision, the material risk, and we look to what that spiritual and psychological risk is, that, that uh, holistic risk that Allah has also given us along with the food that we maybe have. And lastly, we go into al-basit. So you have al-qabid, the contractor, al-basit, the expander. You think about a heart that beats um, and how a heart contracts and expands, contracts and expands. And al-basit is the one who uh, relieves, the one who eases, the one who unfolds, the one who expands, the one who apportions generously, and the one who widens and spreads out. Uh, and al-basit, as I mentioned, are connected not just like the opening and closing of the heart, but like the alternation of the night into the day and the day into the night, back and forth, back and forth. And so when Allah contracts, he also will expand. So, and in the contraction, there may be then the expansion. In the expansion, then there may be the contraction. Uh, the root meaning of al basit is to spread, to level, to expand, to enlarge, to unroll, and to, to grant, to give. And it connotates that time of lightness, the state of happiness, of success, and a time when our heart expands, overflows with joy, high spirits, cheerfulness, and when we feel connected to everything, and when we feel like we have everything, when we've been given so much. But knowing this knows us then how to uh, bring comfort to other people and bring a relief to others because we don't just feel like we've got this all. We, we, we know the source of it. We know that what we've been given and how what, we've, what we're being poured, if this is being poured into uh, our metaphorical cup of life in terms of this this divine uh, drink that's been given of al-basit that's just been given and given and it's just expanding and it's keeps coming we know that it can't our container can't hold all that so we inevitably we want to share it with other people but if we just let it pour out it'll just keep pouring out and eventually it will be constricted it will stop so the the key thing is that as it's pouring out we want to see what's balanced for us but we want to be sure the excess that we give is distributed to others otherwise it will stop at some point when it starts to overflow so you don't go and give your uh, your dinner guest any kind of drink and they're just poured out and it just completely sp spilling over you know you don't you don't go to a restaurant and you're like hey can you refill this water and they just keep pouring it all out until it just overflows and it's empty no they they pour it till it's limit and then they'll stop so uh if it if it does start to go over you then share with other people but if you don't it will inevitably be cut off 
And this, uh, this, this also this, this name helps us remove feelings of maybe sadness, feelings of uh, just feelings of remorse, feelings of grief, because it helps to induce an all embracing kind of consciousness, a expansion of our minds and our hearts, where uh, we feel those connections running through us, we really open up our hearts, we open up our minds and see what all is around us and what we're connected to beyond just the inner attachments we see beyond that. And it helps us attach a Peace, peacefulness in our hearts, a peacefulness in our minds when we see that we have a God that helps us expand, a God that helps us see how many things we're connected to and helps us kind of remove those blockades that we put up that we're not connected to this, we're not connected to that, we're actually connected to so much. Um, and what's important, as we mentioned here, moderation, because it, if we take too much, we forget Allah. We, 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 we get all this, you know, this benefit and all of a sudden we're focused so much on this and we arrive towards arrogance. We're like, oh, we, we, we did this. We, we created all this, all that was expanded, all that was given, we gave all this. And so then uh, we, we forget Allah. But the point is that we want to be in moderation. How do we moderate with something that's been given without any kind of expansion or any something that's at the risk of contraction? We want to give it to other people. We want to share that with the world. So al Basit, as we close out with this name, is the one who pleases the souls by making them happy and delighted, giving them and expanding them what they need. But al Basit is also the one that plants the seeds of life in the body to signif signify that beginning of life therein, as well as the seeds in terms of what can be expanded. We talked about knowledge. We talked about all these things, the things that we have been given by Allah and al Basit expanding them and al Basit widening them and bringing them there. And so uh, at the resurrection, at the day of judgment, at the time when we pass away, uh, al Basit is the one that brings life back. And al Basit is the one that uh, helps us see what we can, what we used to do in the hereafter, but what we are capable of and what we have uh, lying ahead of us in the, sorry, in, in the previous life and what we have lying ahead, ahead of us in the hereafter. And we, as I mentioned, al Basit, al Qabid, al Qabid, al Basit, they are uh, often paired together, they're often commentated together in order to convey that meaning of might and wisdom. Just as Al Qabid, uh, Al Allah is Al Qabid, Allah is Al Basit. So when we say Allah is the ex a contractor, we also note that Allah is the expander. So we don't just get this connotation that it's just a uh, it's just a contracting God that that only does this, even though that's that's the virtue there, that's the name. But Allah is also this, so that you as a human, you as creation, can have comfort that. If you do have times where you are contracted, where you are feeling like you're in the grip of something and things are just really not in a good position, that there will come a point, there will be, you have a God that is the expander, the reliever that will remove this. And if you are in a position where you've forgotten Allah, you've been expanded beyond uh, any measure, you've been given beyond any measure, and you're not doing anything with that, or you're not recognizing that, some of those blessings might seed. If you have extraordinary amount of wealth that you're given, and you're given and you're given and you don't do something with that wealth to help other people it may not be too far-fetched to imagine that that wealth might start to be contracted and so this this just really helps us be mindful of what what we are what we are given in this world what we ha can take for granted but also what is around us uh, so as we think about these these words, these uh, these divine names, Al Qabid, or sorry, Al Alim, Al Qabid, Al Basit. The one thing that li really lifts up is that mindfulness. Is that mindfulness and being aware? In a sense, we are aware from Al Alim of the knowledge of what we've been given. We are aware of the knowledge of what is around us, and Al Qabid and Al Basit that there is that balance that we, we will be contracted, but we will also be expanded and relieved. We will be tested, but we will be uh, given relief. And we, we are, we're given that knowledge of what do we be mindful of? Uh, so if we're being contracted, what are we mindful of, of the world around us and when we, and ourselves? And in Al Basit, what are we mindful of when we have so much and the world around us, how can we share what we've been given? So Bismillah, we'll close out with that and we'll start uh, with the uh, the dhikr of this, but let, let us internalize those names, inshallah, uh, to have more awareness in this life as we as we proceed uh, in throughout this Ramadan and throughout the days to come after Ramadan. So Bismillah, we'll, we'll begin with the with the dhikr here. 
La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al alim, 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 al alim. Al-Alim, 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 Al-Alim. Ya Alim, 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 Ya Alim. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. القابيد 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 يا قابيد 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 لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله 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 الباسط 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 يا باسط 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 لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله 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 لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله 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 so brothers and sisters, for you, those of y'all attending here today, those of y'all uh, who've been coming, those of y'all who are live streaming, coming for the first time, uh, please be mindful that these names are uh, a means of us to recognize all that is around us. The purpose that we're going through these names is not so that we can just know all these names of Allah, or just be like, hey, Allah is all these things, but the world around you reflects all these things. And all of these things are a sign. And of all these things, you contain elements of each of these. And so if nothing else, recognize those portions of you that are reflective of these names and the opportunities in your life that are there. But again, thank you so much for joining. Inshallah, we will continue the series and it may be of benefit for you there in, in the days to come. But Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Appreciate you coming.